This feels so weird. This does feel weird. <laughs> Ew, just looking at each no, other holding no, the mic. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know if I'm too close, too far. We're learning. We're workshopping. If you're not watching, we have a new location today. <laughs> And let us know your thoughts about it. Our faces are very big behind us. The couch is very beautiful. Okay, well, I actually had an orange shirt on earlier, and then I walked Did out here and I was in? like, fuck, I actually yeah, can't wear this. So we're at we're recording at my house today for a little change of scenery. This is so weird holding this. I <laughs> <laughs> Not you haven't it. really moved your arm. It's I'm like so, so still. Okay. I'm going to mess up the sound. Well, we're going to loosen you up because Carolyn has it. never made uh, Aperol spritz herself. And I was like, Carolyn, when you come over tonight, like we can make Aperol spritzes. And she was like, you're going to have to teach me because I've never made one. So we're going to make them. I think I've made them. Well, fun fact, I actually got my bartending license when I first you moved to You have lived LA. a million lives. I <laughs> Also, I hope these mics work. Sorry to our editor. I know. Because we're just really, like we're like willy nilly throwing these That's things why I around. Was like, I have an arm at home. Eh, um, well. And I have two arms here. It's, you know what? This is natural. Yeah. This is the real us. This is, girl, we are unscripted. We are literally, couldn't be more unscripted. <laughs> Tell me about your bartending license while uh, I do this. Well, I think I, obviously, I probably had to do that for all spritz. But I just haven't drunk it in so long because mm. I got so sick off of them one mm. time. Right after my one of my first surgeries, I <laughs> went to a friend's house and I was like, man, it's the first time that I haven't been in a bed in forever. Woo! So, of course... We had a million Aperol spritzes. Oh. My mom picks me up because I'm like in a fucking neck brace. She has to pull over on the highway. Did you throw up? So you moment. threw up in a neck brace? Yeah. Did that not hurt so bad? No, it just was embarrassing. More than Yikes. Anything. You know, talk about a cone of shame. Because I just went to the dentist and I was on antibiotics. I mean, I, this I did not drink for as long as you did not drink, but it was like a week and a half of not drinking that once I was able to drink, I went. It was as if one turned to two. Turned yeah, to it was as if it was my first time ever drinking. I like, mean, it, it is kind of crazy. So liberating, being it's with beautiful. a girlfriend. Ah, oh, it's the best. Okay, so basically, an Aperol spritz is like one, one, two. So it's like one and a fourth part Aperol, one part. Well, like, that's not a one. That's a one and a fourth. Well, I'm just trying to make it so pe the people remember. Got it. One, got one, it, got two. It. Marketing, perfect. So we'll just say one, one, two. But it's like one part Aperol, one part like soda water, and then two parts champagne. The, now, how you're supposed to make it is it's supposed <laughs> to be non-flavored soda water and then with an orange wedge, but I don't have that. So we're using pomplemousse to kind of suffice as the orange, even though it's grapefruit. It'll still taste fine, trust me. What is Aperol? Here, I can... um. Well... <laughs> Aperol is an aperitivo that's been around since 1919. It's a liqueur that's based on an infusion of selected herbs and roots. That's like drinking vermouth out of a bottle. Is it good? Not bad. I should have asked you. You heard it here. <laughs> now you have it's two not mics. <laughs> well. If, if I spill on this carpet, this is risky. You really do have such a nice setup. Kate just moved. Before you pop the bottle, I have exciting news. <gasps> did you? Did it happen? I got the place. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Perfect excuse to pop a bottle Love of champagne. It. Tell us about it. Carolyn's finally living. Can you imagine? Can you believe Carolyn and her husband <laughs> have been sharing a studio apartment? We've been sharing a studio apartment. It's on the beach, so that like makes it nice. The view is great. We're like on the sand. Whatever. It's 425 square feet. My husband and I are living our best lives in it, and it's time to live our best lives in something bigger. So we got a one bedroom. It's still close enough to the beach. Good Santa Monica Good area Santa Monica for those area. of you that don't know. My husband is a like bro. He lives up to every part of the name Kyle. <laughs> like he is a surfer, bro, loves it. So Oh, like, Kaylin, I'm so happy for it you. Was, like, it's super cheap for like all that we're getting. I have a walk-in closet. What? Every girl needs I, I that. I don't even have a closet. I was going to ask you guys, like, share. also, if you haven't been able to tell, I gave up on measuring. Oh, I love it. Have you guys had to share a closet? Yes. Fuck that. I have half my wardrobe in storage. That sucks. Which is hard because in California, it's not like we have seasonal, but it's kind of, it kind of runs together. Are we going to be seeing more fits then? I hope so. Okay, baby. Let's really fucking, fucking go. It's been nice to have, like, a summer of simplicity. That's fair. Cheers. Well, quick cheers. Congratulations. Cheers, thank you, you guys need that. You need that. I'm so I hope excited. this doesn't suck. Mm, I love it. It'll do. It's like Anna, Anna X. Is that what people call her? 
Who? Girl that started as Starby's girl. I Anna have on literally TikTok. no idea what you're talking about. You know about. who I'm talking about. Is she the crazy one that does weird shit? No, she's oh. like very normal and that's like kind of part of her thing. She's so relatable. Blonde, short hair, Anna. We're on different sides of you TikTok. You know? That's, not, no. that's crazy if I, don't. I know her and you don't. I don't. No, I'll look I her mean, up real fast. she's not like a Bravo creator, but she's big up. I didn't know who Brooke Schofield was, so. That's true. Anna Starby's. Okay, here we go. Never seen her before in my life. No! Really? Never once. Isn't that wild that you can be like millions, millions famous and still not be known? Well, it's crazy. Yeah, or like that someone can be so prominent in your life but not mine. <laughs> like you probably have seen this girl like a million times. I know from COVID. You guys are like old friends. Her progression. I know her degree. I know like her, she was an engineer. Anyway, welcome to Girls Unscripted. My name is Carolyn. <laughs> My name is Kate, and I didn't even realize we didn't do an intro. We didn't do an intro at all. You probably didn't even recognize us with this new setup. That was our most important intro that we fucked up. Where am I? Don't worry. You're still with us. You're in safe hands. We're doing something a little different on today's weekly gab, where we decided to incorporate a guest, and it's been something that we've wanted to do for a while now. And we were like, I think today's the day, and it's a, a friend of mine that. I know through TikTok. We had a really good interview with her, but first we do want to keep the weekly gab what it is, and that's Mm -hmm. just informing you guys on what the fuck has been going on this week. Reporting the news. So we're going to keep it quick. I'll start with something quick. Okay. David Arquette is mad at Lala Kent. There's some feud going on here. That is the funniest thing to me. That sentence I never thought would leave my mouth. That, I mean, that they're in the same sentence. Yes. Bananas. So Lala was in this. Have you ever seen Spree? No. Okay. I was like, what the fuck is Actually, Spree? Actually, underratedly good movie. Really? I watched it because I have a crush on Steve Harrington from Stranger Things. Yes. And he is in Spree. And I won't get into Wait, like. Is he the one that's in the band too? Yes. Okay. It, Joe, like yeah. DJO. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. He does it all. So I obviously was like, I'm going to watch this movie because he's in it. Didn't even know Lala was in it when I saw it. But basically, he just plays like an Uber driver. I won't, What was she? She was a person in the Uber. So she's actually in the backseat of his Uber with Ariana Grande's brother and someone else. It's really weird. What? Anyways, yeah, she dies. But, <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert, honestly, fun-ass movie, though. I really liked it. But anyways, David Arquette was asked on Watch What Happens Live if he met Lala on the movie, and he didn't really want to answer. Basically, Andy kind of got it out of him, where he was just like, yeah, I met her, and she just, like, wasn't very nice to me. Like, he was like, we didn't have any scenes together, but, like, I tried to talk to her, like, rap parties and stuff, and she just wasn't very friendly. That's so that video kind of resurfaced a little bit. Not surprising. Mm. And then Lala posted a statement on her Instagram story. That's where everybody's posting their apologies these days. And just said, David Arquette, I apologize if I was not friendly to you on the set of Spree. I'd like to point out that I was on set with many people, you being one of them, who are well-known, established actors. I am a girl on reality TV. I felt intimidated and a bit like I did not belong, all while being incredibly grateful for the opportunity. I'm sorry if that came off as an attitude. It was not my intent. It's kind of like an I'm sorry, but. I know. I love how she flipped it a little bit. That it's like, it's kind of your fault, not mine. Yeah. Because you're successful and I'm not. Yeah. So, yeah, it is very I'm sorry, but. Yeah. It's giving that vibe. A bit victim me. Okay, your turn. That's to- all we're going to say about it because we're going to go quickly. We're going really quick. Your turn to tell me something. Um, what are you choosing to tell me? So, I'm choosing to tell you that Lindsay Hubbard is having a baby girl. Uh, let me pop the other bottle of champagne. <gasps> I used to be able to do the. Oh, good job! That was pretty good. That you was you try. It. You're into I don't, my You have nail. Dirty. You know. Yeah. Sorry. I'm that was actually quite bold of me to just stick my finger in my mouth like that without even thinking. No, I, that, it was sexy. Did you notice in the video there was a subtle camera pan to all the Prada bags on the floor? Yes, but I I don't think it was intentional. But again, I don't I'm either. The fool of all of this. I don't think it was intentional either, but I know the internet does. I, I, yeah, totally. And for those of you who didn't see it, she announced it. She posted a video where her boyfriend let her into a, a room, the apartment, hotel. I don't know where they were. I don't know where they were either. And he had it decorated, filled with pink things indicating that it was a girl, which is an interesting reveal option I've never thought of, is let your spouse or partner know and then just wait for them to bring it on you at any moment. Everyone online is like, she knew. Yeah. Like, she set this up. Like, there's no way that she, he like, knew it. She's that's... so type A controlling. 
You think she didn't know before he did? I'm such a fool. I mean, I'm such a fool. I'm like, it seems so genuine how surprised she was. You never know. You never know. But I was like, maybe I should do that. But then I was like, oh, God, no. I don't. No. For when you eventually if have a gender Kyle reveal someday. Kids, like, yeah. He would be so excited. You would know, I, I like, mean, before the gender reveal. Yeah. I think that the last big thing we should talk about, and it's actually a question I have for you, because it was briefly mentioned in our interview with Christina. Oh, God, I know what you're going to say. And I wanted to ask more about it, but it would have totally derailed us. <laughs> yes. So what's going on with Love Island USA Aftermath right now with Kendall? Well, Love Island had its finale. The winners are Serena and Cordell interesting pick but even more interesting that the runner-up was the internet's newest sensation leah and miguel which i didn't know she had come like become so popular online till you told me that so it makes a lot more sense now i just saw that she when she started on love island she had twelve thousand instagram Shut followers up. and now she has over one million no she does not yeah she blew up oh, all in the last most gosh. most of which were in the last week that's fascinating yeah that makes it because she and miguel were not they kind of met towards the end i don't know it, they didn't seem like i didn't think they were gonna be runner up right by any means right but then again there wasn't like a clear really good clear-cut winner kendall was one of the runners up with danielle okay get on danielle and then unbeknownst <laughs> to kendall and i have not seen the video this is just what i've heard someone leaked a video that was explicit of him doing explicit things with the buttocks but it's not clear if it was with another guy now i know there was some homophobic hate he got from it mm, um, i don't like that but also was, other people were commenting that doesn't mean he's gay it just means he likes butt stuff yeah so, <laughs> god don't really fucking sad. king shame I mean, people like, you know, but how fucked up is it that he's coming back from Love Island, he's gonna get his phone, the first thing he sees is that someone posted this online? I saw he just, like, right before you came, I saw that he did speak out about it and was like, what a crazy thing to see the moment I get my phone I back. I loved his response, though. I kind of stand it, because it was, like, very chill. It was like, this sucks, I thought I was in confidence, moving on, so excited for what comes next. If he lets it blow over, it will blow over. It will over. blow over. It doesn't matter because what that person did leaking that, that's a shitty thing to do. It's, it's not like they leaked him killing cats. You know, I yeah, feel like we yeah, always yeah. use that as the example. But yeah. like, he didn't do Great anything bad. He trusted someone and they betrayed him. That's not on him. As far as I know, that's what happened. I think that's what happened. Yeah. That's horrible. Now we'll go into the second part of our weekly gab this week, which is our interview with Christina Coca. You might know her as Coca Coca online. She's got great content and she's going to say where you you can follow her and all that good stuff. Let's just hop right into our interview with Coca. Yep. See you guys there and be ready to get educated. Woo! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay. I'm nervy, Christine. I told you you were our first. <laughs> oh my God. It's going to be amazing. I've only been one other person's first. I, you know, you, oh my you, God. you beat me to the joke that I was going to say that you took both of our virginities and we don't need to elaborate further on that. <laughs> Today, we are gabbing with our first ever podcast guest, Christina Coca. And I'm going to do a cute little introduction for you, Christina. So, I know you're going to be like, because you're so humble. Just let me flex on you for a second. Okay. Okay. Just let it happen. Christina is an internet celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I waited till I swallowed my water. She's an internet celebrity to me because when I first started doing these like Bravo TikToks and stuff, like, and this is a true story. You were one of the first people, like one of the first Bravo accounts I ever followed. I feel like we, even though we've never met in person, I feel like we're like friends with each other now. You're a reality TV and Bravo savant and an actual real life journalist. <laughs> right? I feel like that's... That's correct. And fun fact, I've learned yesterday that you are from the same town as Ariana Maddox. And I think that's a fun fact. Very small place in Florida called Melbourne, yes. So this is our first time for our Gabbers meeting you. Christina, it's your first time meeting Carolyn. And we are so honored to have you on. And... Really, the reason that we had you on is because for those of you that are listening, you know that we are, this is our weekly reality gab, and we gab about everything that's happening in reality TV, and we've got so many people messaging us like, you need to talk about these Vanderpump lawsuits, so Carolyn and I were like, let's call in the most passionate person <laughs> that we know ever that we can 
talk on this. So you've made so many videos and stuff about this. And when you and I talked on the phone yesterday, I was like, well, should we even really talk about the Tom Sandoval one? Because it's like kind of over. And you were like, it's not fucking over. So what do you mean by that? What do you mean that it's like not over? Just get right into it. I love that. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much for the introduction, by the way. And yeah, I just, I don't know. I remember when I first found you too. I think you maybe replied to one of my videos or something. The sound of your voice is really soothing to me. <laughs> I don't know why. And also I thought I saw you walking down the street and almost stopped and yelled like, Kate, is that you? But it was not you. I wish you would have. I'll love you in, by the end of this or right now, Carolyn, I'll love you too. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So the Tom Sandoval thing. So what Tom Sandoval did was file something that was in response to the already existing suits. And so him saying never mind about it doesn't do anything to impede the process of the other lawsuits. And the lawsuit I'm referring to, the word rhymes with horn. I don't know if I'll just say revenge lawsuit. I'll just say that. I feel like we <laughs> say so many words on this thing that we probably say, shouldn't say. That's so, that's so sweet. But you, yeah, go for it. No, yeah, we don't want our podcast to get flagged. So we're going to talk about a lot of corn. Yeah, revenge. I'll just say revenge. This is all related to Rachel filing a revenge lawsuit against Tom and Ariana. So the reason that it's so complicated is because the only way she could take action really against Tom Sandoval for recording her without her consent on their sexy FaceTime is to involve Ariana. And so it was kind of like almost by default or by like protocol that she had to also suit like file suit take action against ariana and this is a civil suit can you talk about that a little bit christina why does she have to go after both why can't she just go for tom i feel like we're having like a real lawyer on and we're like picking apart this lawsuit <laughs> yeah you're like a real life human so this is great <laughs> if you want a real life lawyer emily d baker who is really big on youtube is like a very experienced trial attorney and loves Bravo. She has gone over these as well. The only expertise I bring to it is just having covered many like legal cases and reading lots of court documents and lawsuits and stuff over the course of like my news career. It's not my first like lawsuit that I've ever read, so. Not your first lawsuit rodeo. The reason that Rachel had to include Ariana is because the crux of the issue is the alleged distribution of this video and so even though tom is the one who recorded it and she, ariana admitted this that she sent it to herself that was my next question sorry to cut you off it's like i had oh i think carolyn and i we had talked about this of like mm -hmm. we remember her saying that but couldn't find it anywhere so the whole time i'm like did is it confirmed that she sent it to herself yeah, she has said that on camera, and I've read Ariana's response to the filing in which she goes through all of, you know, what she takes ownership of doing. Right. Which is sending it to herself and sending it to Rachel. And there's, <laughs> I mean, there's screenshots of the text messages in, in the, and these are like publicly accessible. You just have to like know how to access them. So there's sc screenshot of the text message where she sent it to her saying you're dead to me you fucking rat <laughs> I, her insults at that moment in time were unparalleled so it has like the preceding it's just one screenshot of the text thread between them but it's like they're talking about like watch what happens live and like oh we're watching your episode and blah 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 the only person ariana distributed it to was herself and to rachel so tom is the one who recorded her Rachel claims without her consent, which she first admitted on Bethany's podcast. And that's a crime in and of itself? Like, is that separate from the distribution? I mean, yes, it is separate. So to to pursue a revenge, like, case against somebody, there's, especially in California, there's a few different... Wait, is it literally called a revenge case? She is suing them for revenge porn. Yes. Okay, that's so fun. Okay. This got darker, that escalated quickly. Well, Carolyn's just asking to make sure she doesn't ever accidentally distribute revenge porn herself. So she's yeah, trying to yeah. get all I the need facts. It, I need to know the nitty gritty here. I'm <laughs> on the line. All of this is alleged. However, what's not alleged is what each of the parties has admitted to doing. Ariana says, yes, I sent it to myself and to Rachel, and then it was deleted. And then we deleted it, and no one ever 
saw it. Nobody else ever, whatever. And that's the issue is that Rachel is claiming that other people saw it and that Ariana Mm. sent it to people. At least as of now, there's no proof or evidence or record of that happening. And, you know, when you go through these like lawsuits, you have to provide you have to like hand over your phone and all these things that go through what's called discovery and then uh, forensics. So like a, a technical like forensics expert will like do bro the stuff that can be tracked like in other cases I've watched or, or trials I've seen or whatever. Like there's just a recent one I was watching and it's like every single time you like push the break in your car i believe it i totally believe it and then with your phone it's like then you close the screen then you open the screen then you swiped left like it is wild that's like they can find everything that's nuts ariana had like handed over her phone and they had like a forensics expert go through it and there's like no like they would have seen that that had taken place if she had sent it to multiple people or whatever and so they did not find that um in the forensics analysis however we don't have what rachel's phone says we don't have any of that because she hasn't had to turn that in yet so all we have are rachel's claims which is like whatever she's assuming happened and that she thinks happened to answer your original question as to why ariana is even involved at all is that she again couldn't only go for tom for the recording part because the recording part in itself does not meet all the like revenge elements of like intending to inflict emotional distress and and distributing it and there it is okay that makes so much sense i was gonna ask to me it does seem like it's two different things what tom did was like recording her without her consent but i is that the same thing as revenge porn as far as i understand the biggest issue with this is other people seeing it is the sending the sharing the distributing of it also leads into like the you know this has damaged my reputation this has prevented me from future career opportunities this has caused emotional distress and it's crazy because this literally just happened to somebody on love island like yesterday i know absolutely nobody on planet earth deserves to have this happen to them and it's not excusable in any way shape or form and so yeah. my whatever i feel about it with regard to like leave ariana out of this does not s- excuse at all that she was vi- that tom violated her right to privacy mm-hmm. and that he shouldn't be that he should be held accountable like my thing is like what's really go- happening now is that it's just this continued re-traumatization yeah. of this woman like, and the the things that Rachel is claiming in her original, you know, in in the pursuit of of this, so to the extreme, to the point where it's like, if you want to succeed in this, at least claim some believable stuff. I feel like Rachel is just doing a bit too much, and she's saying a bit too much, and then her pu- and her publicist is like doing Ask Me Anythings on Rachel Goes Rogue. It's like, just be fucking cool for a second because you actually stand a chance at maybe winning this lawsuit. But the more you talk, the more your story just isn't making sense. Dude, and even long before this, you want to say allegedly, this alleged publicist. (laughs) (laughs) If that's what we can call her. (laughs) Her words, not mine. Long before Rachel's alleged publicist said anything about this, This lawsuit came after Rachel Goes Rogue, after Bethany, after interviews, after everything that Rachel has said and done. And so in the like rebuttal or or response rather from Ariana or by Ariana's attorneys to that, it's my kind of fact check. It's (laughs) It's her words. It is her own words that she said that contradict the stuff that she's claiming like pages of like excerpt from rachel goes rogue podcast episode 6 21 minutes and 49 seconds and then a like chunk paragraph quote of exactly what she said at some point rachel said i've always wanted to be on a magazine Ah! i didn't think it'd be like this but it's still cool right like shit Ah! wait 
Yes, I actually, okay, Carolyn and I also, like, religiously were listening to Rachel Goes Rogue when she was talking about all this stuff, and I remembered no. that episode. Was that and not? We listened on, like, 2.0 speed. Yeah, okay, so basically that, just to chime in here about that magazine, she received that magazine, you may know this already, but from Tom Sandoval while she was at the Meadows, and he... He mailed it to her and they were on the cover for like a bad reason for Scandaval. And she says on that podcast episode, I've always wanted to be on a magazine. This isn't the best reason, but it was still cool to see my face on the cover of a magazine. How crazy. How do you think, since you have like insight and kind of the the backstage of how this works, how do you think this happened? Do you think the lawyer approached her after she had done all these things and then said, hey, you might have a case here. Or do you think she was considering it the whole time? I mean, I just can't think of a sane person who would put out all of this evidence and then go do a lawsuit. Or yeah, do a podcast during a, a active lawsuit. Yeah. I believe this all started with, I don't want to, Shmethany Schrankel. Yeah. I'm scared oh. of her. Don't you, you guys kind of have some beef online, don't you? Do you? Yes. <laughs> yes, she I has me blocked. The way my Bravo, like, problematic faves are, like, simply only problematic and not my faves anymore is, like, really... At least she used to own it. It's the same way I feel about Lala. Like, if you're, like, slightly unhinged, but, like, you owned it, that's one thing. But then to go and be, like, nah-uh. I'm, like, no, no, no. Right, like, to play the victim. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Own it. Own, own it. the crazy. Yeah. Be real be as so katie, fucking for real right as now. katie mother maloney says be real rachel's attorneys are the same ones that are on all of the suits from brandy glanville to like oh. leah and stuff that's against bravo that goes all the way back to like this reality reckoning that yeah. did not reckon i'm like 90 percent sure that the attorneys are at least on those suits i had heard something like that too yeah they're the same attorneys that are like involved with everything related to that and and this again began with rachel going on bethany's podcast because that is where she first said that tom recorded her without her consent i will never forget listening to that podcast no me neither me neither it's like you know how you always know where you <laughs> this is what i'm gonna say is dark I, you know where you were that's all you have i'm you gonna, know, say. That's all gonna say you know where i know exactly where i was <laughs> so i was literally in my bed and i was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and it was just the announcement that she was gonna go on it and i was right. like oh, and nobody knew when it was dropping and then bethany the podcast Shmethany, the podcast aficionado that she is, dropped whatever she dropped. And then it just ended. She never said part two. Yes. Uh, yes. And we were all like, what is this? And then there was part two. And then there was part three. And then she continued to talk about it and yell about it because she was so defensive about people calling out the fact that she had never watched the show. And didn't know anything about the situation. Yeah. I feel that way about a lot of these podcasts. I have an issue watching anybody gaslight anybody, right? Duh. I had already started to become really frustrated with, like, TV networks and just, in general, just, like, treating the audience like they're stupid. And especially Bravo-related because the way that they teased the Vanderpump Rules season 10 reunion, that part three, the last five minutes, you won't believe, you won't believe, you won't believe. Yes. And the last five minutes was Rachel saying things that the audience had already put together and yeah. assumed that they just hadn't admitted yet. And it was like, it changes everything. Yeah. And it so was... it's just like, do you think we're fucking stupid? You guys, come on. In terms of Tom Sandoval, it's one thing for him to gaslight Ariana, but it's another thing for him to gaslight us. And it's like, that's when it proved that like he really doesn't give a fuck. It's like, you literally only care about yourself and there's no accountability like your relationship with ariana is different than your relationship with like i don't know i just would think tom sandoval would care so much about what we think and it still was just like continuing to lie to us about shit that we obviously know that's a good point when he went on nick vile's podcast i was really like woof sir but nick said it to him to his face I believe that you believe 
what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's the and, best way to put it. And that and that's also where I've got well, I don't know about right now that that's how I feel, but at least up to a point where I was like, yes, like you just said, like he does care what we think to the degree that he is not operating like in actual reality. He's operating in the like reality TV perception of him. And so he doesn't. Do you think that he knows the, the difference between the two? Well, the New York Times interview that he did the most hated man in america article with that first pointed out his affinity for women's zara suits oh <laughs> <laughs> where he talked about oj simpson and george yes. floyd how can we yeah. forget and no, danny masterson yeah yes tom really loves to be like he he's like i'm a good guy because look at how much worse those other guys are it's like that's <laughs> He's he's literally like I'm getting more hate than Danny Masterson and he's an actual R word. I'm like that has nothing the fuck to do with this. Yeah. Why don't you be quiet? Also, remember on the on the on season eleven when he was like, yes, I'm sorry, dude, <laughs> <laughs> in his closet, <laughs> and he's like, I'm being treated like Scott Peterson. That's right. Yes, somebody's attorney. This is like the craziest. If if you have never seen this show and no one told you it was reality TV and they just told you what was going on, you would be like, that is the craziest shit I have ever heard. Oh, including, I think I learned this from year, uh, from one of your TikToks, like the Rachel's lawyer is the brother of, of Sandoval's lawyer and that's who he had to fire had to fire to like try to clear his name and all that. Well, it's funny. It's like you tell these stories, right? And it's like this, I'm, I'm, it's a crazy story about this crazy lawsuit, blah, blah, blah. And just when you think you can't get any crazier, you're like, and they were brothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say about that New York Times interview is that during that, the interviewer, the writer, like observed, like, I think he has a hard time comprehending reality tv version of reality and actual reality and he's always operating in this like i guess really just the word is arena because that means there's chairs in an in a in an audience like mm. in an arena like which like i made that up just now. no that's good that's <laughs> yeah. in an arena period <laughs> but i meant like in in the arena uh, he's always operating in the arena of like what See now, I've said arena so many times. I don't even know what that word. No, you're that getting there. Like Keep going. Word. We're getting. We'll get you back on track. <laughs> um, of what the perception is of him, of being watched and viewed and stuff. He says the exact, the exact same things over and over and over and over. He would be like, "We weren't operating with logic. I wasn't using logic. We weren't operating with logic. My, um, it wasn't emotions." You know, it wasn't logic, emotions. Right, like he has a script. Yes, every single thing he says, he said before. And so, again, like, I don't know if he was talking to somebody without being filmed. Like, I, I feel like he would probably say the same stuff. I mean, this is something yeah. they talked about on Rachel Goes Rogue, too. And I think a lot of castmates have said this, that like, but Rachel was very... You know, you, you kind of have to take what she says with a grain of salt. But there's some things that I have no trouble believing. And she talks about how reality tv was his life that is his that is him they ask about the james proposal and she, the james and raquel proposal and she was like i know he did that to look good on tv everything he does is to look good on tv let me ask you this to just like you know because we could talk about this forever where does that all that we just talked about where does that leave us today i i guess it makes sense why he would have filed this separate law. I mean, I don't agree with it. The logic was, is that him and Ariana were being sued together, but I guess he wanted to separate himself because, so he sued her for going through his phone without his authorization or permission, but then allegedly pulls out because he didn't know that it was a lawsuit or a suing. So like, where does that leave us today with all of this? And can I add another question? Do you think he just did that because of the backlash he got? I'm pretty sure he dipped out because people got mad. I really wanted to like get that in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it, to the question of where does it leave us? It leaves us exactly where we were before. His team made a counterclaim, which is like, that's a, 
he's suing Ariana. It's just, it's not like out of the, it's not a whole separate suit. It's a counter, it's like a response to the already existing claim. Right. So it like wouldn't happen without the other claims preceding it. That's like why it's like, he's like, it was a counterclaim. I didn't know it was a lawsuit. So he filed a counterclaim against Ariana claiming that she accessed his phone without um like proper authorization right she had the passcode to his phone she stated in her all of her legal documents and stuff like we that's something that he gave he consented to <laughs> he gave to me with his consent a long time ago like someone handed me his phone because it fell out of his pocket while he was performing i didn't like go and like Mission Impossible, roll underneath a laser pointer alarm to go and get his phone. Right. He would be saying the same thing if he had printed out photos of their text messages, left it on the kitchen counter, her seeing it, and then him being like, but she wasn't supposed to look. What he said was when he went over to Schwartz's apartment in, in that finale, when he was like, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. And Schwartz is like on the other side hugging him like like just dead and in yes. dead inside, yeah. <laughs> Lifeless, like it's okay, man. <laughs> um he said all she had to do was follow me. Yes. And I was like, fuck, I really wish she said all she had to do was check. Well, yeah, but if she would have followed him, he would be suing her for like stalking him now. Like he was gonna find anything. Yes. Yes, and a lot of people said that, too. Um, like, if it's not this, it's something else. Yeah. News of the filing came out in the overnight hours. Like, it wasn't, like, I say, like, early whatever morning, early Tuesday mornings, technically, like, East Coast, it was after midnight. And right. Whatever. He and his current girlfriend deactivated their Instagrams, okay? Yeah. They deactivated their Instagrams at the same time that, people found out about this filing, this lawsuit. So like, I don't know, 48 hours to 72 hours goes by where everyone is like, what are you doing? How dare you leave her out of this? Like now you're gonna go after her. You want her money for what? For fu like Tom sues Ariana for the like evil act of finding out about his affair. Like, yeah. are you serious right now? So then he shows back up on Instagram you know, a couple days later and posts that he had no idea that this was like a new filing or a lot. Those were I was never told that this was a new lawsuit. And yeah, he basically said I was confused. It was all my lawyer's fault. He was like, I should have done more due diligence. I fired him. I hope that this can be resolved quickly so that we can both move on with our lives. Sir, she has. She's trying. She's been moved on. She's I think trying. That he's She's begging to move on. Literally. It's, please, she, God. She couldn't, she's in fucking Fiji. She couldn't be further away from this situation. I think he still wants people to see Ariana how he sees Ariana. And he sees her as a, I think he sees her as a bad person. I think that I don't have any trouble believing that they were not in a good relationship prior to all of this. Not that that justifies cheating. I just think that they were both so over each other as most people are in a relationship. Sometimes you leave relationships really not liking that person. That doesn't mean that they're not a good person or whatever. But I think in his mind, he will always be trying to get vengeance because he doesn't believe that he should have been the most hated man. He should have been the one that was loved and she was wrong. She's the bad guy, which is just obviously not true. But I think he wants people to see her how we how he sees her. And I think he thought by doing this lawsuit, maybe that would help. And it obviously just completely backfired on him. I agree with the sort of like overall conclusion that mm -hmm. you're coming to. But I don't think that their relationship was like bad to the point that it was unsalvageable. So to that end, Ariana saw Tom and Ariana both ways, like saw who that real person was. And I believe that. You know, and I feel like also we still saw on camera the ways he was trying to, like, plant things in her mind. It was a conversation, like, towards the end of season 10, the one where he 
they were arguing over what quality time was. And yeah. she has said since very early in their relationship, we have watched them have these conversations like, I need quality time. I need actual physical time spent with you in order to feel like I have a sexual connection with you. And he's like, yeah, totally. Blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, he, he's out all the time. They're never like interacting with each other because like, God forbid, she goes to sleep when it's dark out and then like wakes up when it's light out. The, yeah, the quality time she's asking for is also probably sober quality time. His is like, let's do mushrooms and get fucked up. Yeah. He's like, well, what is your definition of quality time? She's like, I don't know, like going for a walk with the <laughs> dog. And he's like, no. And you want to know what's funny about that is there's literally, at least within that year or maybe two years, there are pictures of them sky. I mean, yeah. Right. They did do that shit. He was just never happy. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. You're he was right. looking for something. Yeah. And so I could see him like trying to plant like n seeds of negativity. And you have to remember that like he, I just think in the whole context of their relationship, the fact that she never wanted to get married or have kids, but to her home ownership was like getting married. So they owned a home. That's like the biggest financial commitment you can make for like at least your foreseeable future she froze her eggs which by the way the only f egg freezing we saw on vanderpump rules was sheena at pride in her rainbow leotard inhale like puffing her inhaler and acting like a crazy person and saying a couple times that she was like oh just my hormones are crazy because i'm freezing my eggs like we would have loved to see the process yeah. of sheena and Ariana freezing their eggs and talking about that, what that's like. Instead, we have Tom and Sandoval, like, I'm here for my jizz report. Right. Them jerking yeah. off while, like, Sand like like Schwartz is waiting outside. Bravo's inherently misogynist, but ew, that's, that's another conversation for another time. But, again, like, she doesn't want kids. He kept saying, like, well, I want them. I want them. I want them. And she's like, okay, well, we can, like, have kids if like you'll that's what you really want and i don't maybe i'll think about it kind of thing because i and i've gotten to that point in a relationship in my last like serious long relationship it was like almost five years my most recent like serious relationship was someone younger than me and that was about four and a half years and the the longest relationship i had had prior to that was with someone much older than me and that mm. was also about five years and the person when i was with the person who was older than me he knew he didn't want kids. And I was at the point where I felt like, well, I don't really know if I want that. But I feel like it got to the point where I felt like the decision had been made and I didn't know what maybe someday. I don't, right. I don't know. Then with the relationship who was younger than me, I got to the he, you know, he I said at the very beginning of our relationship, I don't want kids because by that time in my life, I had figured that out for myself. But he was like, well, I think I might want a family. I think I want that. Like, I want that. Again, within, like, the first month of us hanging out, I said, like, I don't want that. Right. As you should. As you should. That should be, like, no up front. Yeah. If it's a non-starter, then don't start it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he was like, well, I might someday. I don't know. And I'm like, okay, fine. Like, we're early and whatever. But if then, you know, you get to the point where you're like, we have, what are we doing? And I was like. I got to the point where I was like, I'm willing to, again, because I'm older than he, than he is, I'm willing to freeze my eggs. Right. Just in case. Yeah. You're younger than me and whatever. I had a few other stipulations related to it. Uh, basically, like I, w I was very unwilling to even think about doing that if it meant, like, I'm not willing to drive my own physical or mental health emotional well-being into the ground in order to have a kid exist like i'm not willing to like i just i i'm not willing to do that just because it's like a thing people do i'm not gonna like drive my finances into the ground work myself to death feel miserable because i i just want to make it livable for this Carolyn and I have been talking about this topic a lot lately. So Non -stop. this is like a very, uh, it's, the timing is just funny, but yes, yeah, I've been I agree married with for that. two years. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a discussion. I mean, I'm, I turned 37 in a few weeks. So I think about when we broke up a few years ago. So I was like, 
I don't know. I think I was probably approaching 35 at that. Yeah, I was. I, well, because I remember I was in the Bahamas for my 35th birthday. So I definitely wasn't with him. So it was before that. <laughs> I'm willing to do this. Right. And that was, I felt like I really was making like, a, that was like, I was making a personal like concession of like, okay, like I'll freeze my eggs. And it's no easy thing. Which is yeah. hell on your body. So I was like, okay, like, okay, but here's like where I'm at. And he was like, okay, thank you so much for listening to that. So well, thank you for sharing. That was very interesting. No, yeah, that is, in well, it, could, it, it is, it puts a lot into perspective too of like, it's not that, it, I feel like a lot of people, especially on TV, it's so brushed over of like, they froze their eggs, they froze their eggs, they froze their eggs, but it's, it, it, it is essentially the same decision as having a child. Like you, it's just, it is, it's not just a quick and easy decision, you know? Yeah. That's all I was going to say. <laughs> well, physically, I think is what you meant. Like the same as having a child, like the yeah. toll that it takes on your body and it's expensive. You, there's a, it's becomes like a full-time job in itself in order to do that. That also is like, I'm, yeah, let me agree to like wreck my emotional state and like maybe yeah. physical state You're to like pumping maybe yourself up someday. Hormones. Yeah. So she did that. We only knew about it because she said so on a reunion. Right. Because <laughs> we would yeah. never fucking know. Just messed up. So then Tom, the one who even wants the kids, allegedly, that he claims to want, cannot even give up alcohol or whatever he's doing for, like, two weeks worth of time yeah. to have healthy sperm to freeze an embryo. And once you combine sperm with the egg everybody biology and make an embryo the embryo is like the beginning stages of yep. the human tom is telling her at that point in the middle of his affair that he's going to go and do that it's psychotic when he went to that sperm his jizz results appointment with tom schwartz and he called ariana on facetime because she to update her right from the doctor's office he FaceTimed her because she was out of town for her grandmother's funeral. Right. Okay. May I remind you that Tom and Rachel did their thing in their house while Ariana was out of town for that. So he, and that's not the first time. That, so he's in the middle of this thing and he's FaceTiming her talking about the quality of his sperm to fertilize her frozen eggs. That is evil. No, that it's is evil. evil. Whatever the status or the state, I keep saying status, of their relationship was, even if it was deteriorating, I don't believe that it was fully at the state of like, well, we should just end this because otherwise it wouldn't have been something that he felt the need to hot. You're right. Yeah, I see. I totally see that. And now it's sort of like, oh, the fog has cleared, the haze has lifted. So now she's like, oh, he's a piece of shit. Whoops. Well, I think the moral of, of the story is that well, he's continuing to ex ex exude this kind of psychotic behavior. But we're glad that the lawsuit is done. No. We're glad that that umbrella of the lawsuit is done. And so that's... Sorry, I sounded really condescending just now. I feel like when I was like, no, no, no you were right. No, 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 no you, you were, were right. right. Sorry. But yesterday when we were on the phone um, and I was like, no, it's not over. Like you mentioned at the very beginning of this is because here's the like caveat to all of this um, or not even caveat, just like a disclaimer. Like we, I haven't seen the documents. Right. We only know because of his, his right? Instagram, where's, right? Yeah. Where's the proof that you have actually abandoned this whole Good point. thing? We're going off of a story. That's what people are waiting on to see, to like really be like, okay, he dropped this effort or whatever. But it's also like, oh, surprise, he's blaming somebody else for his actions. Like, oh my God, he's never done that before. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and like, you're, again, your attorneys do things on your behalf. So it's like, he's really, he really is like, <sighs> I was I was hoodwinked, bamboozled. It's yeah. This could, should have been a shock, and you know this that is like the perfect example of why Carolyn and I have made this podcast because we were recapping Vanderpump, and then we were like, 
when the season 11 ended, we were like, let's just do like a weekly gab because we were like, there's always going to be shit that goes down in the Vanderpump world. Little did we know, I mean, that, you know, now over well over a year of Scandal, we're still talking about Tom Sandoval suing Ariana. And it just proves that it's going to happen forever. So I'm sure we will continue having guests on here. And whenever the next lawsuit comes out, we're going to need you to break that one down for us <laughs> because you, you are just a fucking wealth of knowledge on this shit. I felt like I was listening to Reddit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I get like lost in yeah. Reddit. I love Reddit. Is this now a good time for me to say, tell everyone where they can find you online? <laughs> I, 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 this was like so heavy and intense, I feel like. No, I think no, this was, was amazing. I think this was good because it, it really did. I mean, I think it's so easy for us to just like be angry at this other lawsuit, right? But it's like good to like, for me, I meant what I said by like, I felt like I was like looking at Reddit. Like it was kind of fun for lack of a better word to be reminded of like the bullshit that we have already gone through to now be at that this moment it makes this new you know section of this lawsuit that tom sandoval filed even more annoying you know on tiktok and youtube i'm at coca coca which is my last name twice and then on instagram i'm coca makoka which is the same i just have ma for marie it's like coca-cola but with two c's that is easiest way when you nice. do the two c's next to each other making a k sound and so do i with riccio and a lot of people argue with me on that so they think it should be riccio riccio well thank you so so much again our first guest ever and i'm so thank I'm, I, you. I literally i was thinking as we were recording like i can't wait to go through and re-listen and like this, this is gonna be really fun. So thank you so much. Oh my God, thank you. And, th and Carolyn, Christina, do you guys think that you are now in love with each other? Yes. We were waiting. We were waiting for I'm that. Married, that was the but like, let's the text. I know. I'm still bitter about both of y'all's ability to make a winged eyeliner. Oh. We are winged today, actually, Carolyn. We're gonna be a thing I'm able to do, and that's fine. I thought I I, I used to be you. I, if I can do it, anyone can do it. It just took a lot of muscle memory. It was it's muscle memory. It's a lot of failed attempts. I promise you. Uh, you know, I'll try, and then it'll be like I'll get it even, but only when it's like it's like Lady Gaga level. Like I'm like, where am I going? I'm not. Hey. I can't. If and when we ever see each other, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna give you the rundown. It's a lot easier than you think. You do have a good wing, Carolyn, but you have Thank a good Thank you wing. so much. It's really good and it's <laughs> fine, you guys, it's fine. Thank you so much, Christina, and we'll see you online making videos. <laughs>